the Boston Bruins curse is officially broken, and somehow the Arizona Coyotes won this game tonight. Boy, howdy. Let's Boy, howdy. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. They have this one in the bag yeah, right from clearly. the drop of the puck. Let's Holy go, Yelts. moly. Dominating the Atlantic Division. Well, welcome home, Arizona Coyotes. Thank you all so much for tuning into the PHNX Coyotes postgame show. Brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button on this video while you're watching live with us now. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah Merrill here with C. Peters. Craig Morgan will be calling in for Mullet Arena shortly, but Petey, what the? I, uh, <laughs> what just happened? So, I, like, Boston's a really good hockey team. Do you know how many games I've lost all year coming in tonight? How Four. many? Four. Four games. One of them to Toronto, one to Vegas. So they're, they're losing to some good teams. It didn't happen tonight at home. And I, I thought the Coyotes are traveling. 14-game road trip. Coming home. They got home at 3, 4 in the morning the other night from Edmonton. Yesterday, one day. And all of a sudden, they got to play the best team in the league. The best team in the league. Literally first like, place. Like, literally team. number literally. one on the number NHL one. standings. First. First. And the Arizona points. Coyotes beat them? And you know what else? The Arizona Coyotes had 16 shots on goal and faced 46 and beat them? So the 16 goal thing. So now people are going to say, oh, they got maybe they're just better shooters. <laughs> maybe they're just- <laughs> that's what it is. They score one out of every four times they shoot. That's how elite the Arizona Coyotes shooting percentage is right now. And the other team in the Atlantic Division that they beat it was the second place team in the Atlantic. Do you know who that is? Who is that? That is the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> so now they've beaten the, the top team, the Boston Bruins. The Arizona Coyotes own the Atlantic. And I, I'm wondering now. Just saying. Should they move the Boston Bruins? I mean, pover- poverty franchise losing to the Coyotes? Losing to the Coyotes? Just saying. Man. Maybe you think they enjoyed Old Town and Mill Avenue maybe just a shade too much? I don't the... even think they did because they played good. Like they that Boston Bruins team. Like five minutes in, we're like, holy shit, this could be 3 nothing. Like it was, their scoring chances were unbelievable. Vamelka, like I keep saying it, I don't get it. Like he, he, he is him. He is him. <laughs> he is like he him. stopped his leg out reached. He makes the save. He's looking the other way. He makes the save. Like he is him. It, it was just <laughs> unbelievable tonight. It, that that might be his best performance of the season. Like that was just unbelievable. The amount of pressure he had and breakaways and shots and power play shots and he, he wins the game. I mean, this this was an absolute dominating performance by the best team in the league. Not even close. Not even close. And the goalie maybe should have played that puck on that icing. Or was it icing? Hmm. The linesman said. Oh no. well, whatever. HK, listen, HK. listen. We're all we're in the business of. There's a lot to unravel. There's here. a lot to unravel. Let's just put out a statement here. We're in the business of wanting the Coyotes to lose, so they have the best opportunity to land the first overall draft pick. However. There are some occasions throughout the season where it is worth celebrating a win. This is one for a few reasons. Number one, they haven't won a game in, what is it, five or six straight. They haven't beat the Boston Bruins since October. 2009. Since October 17th, 17th, 2009. 2009. I've already seen some comments about how old people were. I personally was in middle school still in 2009. And who, They have a 19-game losing streak against the Boston Bruins. Between 2009 and now, that's broken. And what we've already said, the Boston Bruins are the best team in the NHL, and the Arizona Coyotes just beat them at Mullet Arena in front of of 4,600 fans, many of whom were Boston fans. We're going to throw this back to October of 2009 because we talk about this the the Mullet, close to 5,000 fans, right? Jobbing.com Arena that night had 9,000. And that's what, what was said was in the building. So there were probably seven. So not much different. Game-winning goal was assisted by Shane Doan and Keith Yandel on the assist. A 21-year-old Keith Yandel scored by Adrian Acoin. Wow. Brzgalov had 22 saves. And that is the last time this franchise has beat the Boston Bruins. That is unbelievable. 2009? Boy, howdy. That's a long, long time ago. And that's a lot of losses between now and then. And there's, there's a lot of good hockey teams that lost to the some ruined team. And I, I got to admit, there's one person in this studio that believed in the Kachina at the second intermission. And his name is Sean <laughs> DePaz. Because Sean went all in, <laughs> hit the money line, 
And not even seconds later, Nick Schmaltz Boom. scores. Yeah, Nick I wasn't. I didn't, I didn't take him before the game. It was second period, and I just there was second intermission. I just felt it. Boom. And what do you know? Literally seconds a later, of, a little bit of a in the Kachina. And meanwhile, the the PGNX Sun show is going on. They're all sad about the Suns' third straight loss, or I don't know how. And they got Tiersten bringing facts. People are dropping twenty one three and one. That's well, facts. Well, I wanted to say Nicholas did this thing here where he said twenty percent of Boston yes, bosses again, have facts. come to the Coyotes. That's how you must with stats. I love stuff like that. You can also say that the Coyotes, the Bruins, have never won a game in Mold Arena. Yes, um, I like it. What else? Um, um, a team, team a team using the annex visiting room has never won a game at Mold Arena. Mall Arena. I like true. that. The Arizona Coyotes are undefeated in their new annex, annex? locker room. Also like it. True. Yep. Yeah. Love it. I like it. Wait till Toronto. Comes. I think the Coyotes probably have the highest winning home winning percentage of any team. I mean, they played five games. I'm just saying of, of any <laughs> no. team. We'll to, mm, I don't think so, but we'll no. have to look at it. In, no, gonna... I mean in the in their arena. Like I don't think any team has a higher percentage winning percentage in their arena. Like all the time, Coyote, or yeah, this and the Coyotes do at Mall Arena. <laughs> We'll have to look into that in one. In the month of December. In the month of December. <laughs> the, yeah. Coyotes are, Coyotes are the hottest team in the month of December. The Coyotes hottest are undefeated home team at in the month of December. Home in the month is, of December. I tell you what, though, and this goes back to a couple of things. We're not going to sit here and quote, hey, the Coyotes are better. Wow, they no. beat up the ones. Their goaltender saved them the entire game. Like, it was Vimelka all night long. So we're not going to kid ourselves with that. But on the other side of this, there were some really nice plays and some guys did some really good things. Lawson Kraus, Matthias Michelli gets two points in that game. Matthias Michelli's two points. With his two points, he pulls within two of the rookie lead. Now he's with 19. Um, uh, Winnipeg Jet. Perfetti. What? Perfetti gets one. So Perfetti's tied. So Perfetti and Michelli are now tied. So it's Matthias McCalder. Matthias McCalder. Um, Espo is here with the headset on. Espo. How do the Suns do tonight? <laughs> Can you guys remind me what it's like to win? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? How about the Sun Come Show? On, we've done so many lost post game shows in a row. It's the been sun show. so long since I've had to deal with this that I don't understand the pack th therapy mentality. <laughs> And I had to come in here to, to enjoy what it's like to celebrate a win, to feel excitement again, to feel anything again. So thank you, guys. It is, it is as they say in Stranger Things, this is the upside down. This is the upside down. This because the Suns now are on a little bit of a losing streak, and the Yotes are on a one-game one. winning streak. Yeah, that's a lot for the Yotes. We're <laughs> one-game winning lot. streak, buddy. Hey, I'm, I'm Will. <laughs> you I'm are Will. Will. Lost the You're lost in the upside down of Suns fandom right now. Can you believe that? Remember when we broke into the Sun Show last year after we'd lost like 11 straight, uh, yeah. probably? And they were on their way to playoff dumb. Man, um, <sighs> I love all the comments, people saying how old they were in 2009. That's unreal. Um, also, Mike says hello from North Carolina. Hello. Wow, that's up late, Mike. Uh, the, the chat's moving really fast. I'm trying to stay on top of it. We appreciate all of your from comments. From Virginia. Elliot's staying up late, too. These are after hours. I appreciate it. Coyotes you. after Hockey dark. Oasis set with seven in 2009. Seven? Really? <laughs> oh, 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 wait, what? I was in my late 40s. Just working on my low, lowering my cholesterol in 2009. <laughs> Wait, Emma's standing over me. I was seven. Emma, Emma was, was ten years old. No, or, ten? Nine, <laughs> nine years old. Nine years old. Nine years old. Years old. That's that Syracuse oh education. Oh my god. Again. Yeah, SAASU education. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, Chris. Wherever Chris is, it's 5:30 a.m. We appreciate you tuning well, in. I'll be to up our at show. 5:30 though, so I could. I don't. I don't yeah, but tomorrow. But you're gonna anymore. go to sleep first. Anywho. It, but so we, we talk about the shots on goal. And where, where, where we should go? We should go. Let's just let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the numbers because because this is all about the numbers. It is all about the numbers because boy, boy howdy, PD, boy, freaking howdy, howdy. Four three final. Obviously, the only one that matters. But we already said it. 46 shots on goal for the Boston Bruins, which by the way is a season high for yes. them. Yes. This season, up until this point, they'd only their most was 43 shots on goal, which they did. What was it? Four different times this season. So 46 was a season high for them. Again, the best team in the league. And line two, a pattern we've seen night after night after night. The Coyotes failing to score on the power play. The other team capitalizing on their power play, the penalty kill and the Coyotes penalty kill and power play continue to uh, not do so well. However, we're not going to dwell on the negatives tonight. No, it but... I do want to make sure we address this last line here, which is shot attempts. The Boston Bruins had 76 shot attempts. The Arizona Coyotes had 30 shot attempts. And for the record, 
in the second period, the Boston Bruins had 23 shots on goal just in the second period. And meanwhile, the Coyotes only had 16 in the whole game and 30 shot attempts in the whole game. Well, and, and somehow they won. And somehow they won this game. I still don't know why or but, how. And you threw well, out the, the Pasternak stat. Pasternak had 13 shots on goal. 13 by himself. One guy. 13 attempts at the net. He almost outshot Not shots, the Coyotes. Attempts. He, he had 13 almost, attempts. Sorry, nine almost, shots, 13 attempts. But still, he almost out. He he took half the shots the Coyotes did. It's insane. It, it, they dominated this game, and you look at the, the the special teams. They get two power play goals. Coyotes fail to score on the power play again. They too many men on the ice again, and. Yeah. We'll just say it over and over and over again. The only reason they win this game is Karel Vamelka was absolutely lights out. And I want to say this because we talk about Karel Vamelka being a consistent goaltender. He needs to be more consistent. He's got to find some consistency in his game. I think he found it. Like you think from you November, think? if you get rid of his first three starts, take those out. He's top three in um, saves against expected goals. He's that that performance tonight was unbelievable unreal performance he clearly saves the game this could have been absolutely a lopsided loss and they're coming home and that's what we saw a year ago at this time when they're losing 6-1 7-1 they would be down in a game it was exactly the same game exactly the same game except they were five minutes in they were down three nothing and every on the bench is going oh shit we're gonna lose again and it's over when a goalie makes that saves guys keep working even when even when it looked like they were down and out of this game they just kept plugging and plugging and and I, you have to admit if they're scoring at a 25% shot on goal, uh, you know, scoring percentage, shooting percentage. That's not going to be consistent through the year. But, my gosh, they just kept working and working and working. And you're right. If you're going to win games, and we said this before, beat the good teams. Beat Toronto. Yep. Beat Boston. And lose against Anaheim and, and San, Jose San Jose next week on Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Um, I think we should just go ahead and, and do this now, and that's crown our DraftKings king of the game. Who is because that? Who do you think it is? It's Karel <laughs> Vezmelka. Vezmelka, uh, 43 save tonight. It's his ninth career 40-plus save game. Nine, nine times he's done that in a year and a half. Less than a year and a yeah, half. Yeah, how does that happen? Of his I, career. This team, I, I keep saying, they're going to have to figure out a way to limit the shots against. And then again, something like this happens. They, You know what? And even the goals, you look at the Coyote goals. They were really good goals. I, I have to admit, I wish... I'm sure Boston, when they're watching the film tonight, they're going to wish they played that last goal maybe a little bit different. Yeah. The winning goal on that icing. And you know what? If the ref doesn't put his arm up to say this is going to be icing, and he didn't at that point, somebody should have played or the puck. Or you got to treat it like it's Yeah, it's that it's play. live. Yeah, you can't, you can't be lax. And that's the thing, too. I think sometimes teams come in and, and they see the Coyotes down there in 29th, 30th, 31st yeah. place. And, you know, they played Swayman tonight. They didn't play Allmark. Um, and and that's to be expected against against this team. And and you, we've seen what the Coyotes have done over this last stretch here. They've been losing games, um, but you can't you can't count them out. You just you just can't. And Karel Vimelka was that guy tonight. He yeah. stood on his head. He had a him. He had himself a game. He had himself an unbelievable game. I mean, these are some of the best skilled players in the league. The Boston Bruins could win the Stanley Cup this year. Yeah, they, they could. really could. And Karel Vamelka had the performance that he did tonight, and he deserves all the praise, all the praise. And a couple of things with that too. You look at Swayman. The Coyotes are going to get a lot of backup goalies here. They're they're just that's the way the schedule falls out. They're going to look at the schedule, see they're playing the Coyotes, and they're going to going to be able to give a guy a night off. It's just going to happen. So take advantage of it. And, and I think that, that the winning goal is an example of that. Like maybe, maybe Linus Allmark plays that, Linus, sorry, plays that a little bit differently and maybe something different happens. But the shot by Kraus is elite. The tip by Kraus is elite. Like he he was a monster today. Like and I'll, I'll use that, Tyson, thanks for that monster quote. <laughs> um, he, he was the big man. He Those two goals are huge. But if not Michelli making a really nice play and a really nice pass. He's not getting that goal. And let's go back to a goal that didn't count. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Because Chikrin scores on the power play, or what at least what we thought was on the power play, and that was an unbelievable pass. So I, I no quit right now on those goats. No quit at all. Um, Lawson Krause had his 11th and 12th of the season tonight, obviously. 
scoring the game winner with, I think it was about 13, 13 seconds, seconds 13.6. to go. You already talked about Michelli, who had two assists tonight and, and where he is in the rookie scoring. And even though they called back that Chikrin goal, Chikrin did get an assist on the first Kraus goal. Um, Gostasper had um, an assist tonight. I think he would have had the other assist on the other goal as he well. Um, and then... Kraus also assisted on the Josh Brown goal. So oh, Kraus had himself a night. Oh, and so did Michelli. So, and, and there could have been a lot of kinks. And we talked, sure. we, for, like, we forgot about the chicken goal being overturned because the end was so chaotic. I forgot about Josh Brown scoring 23 seconds into this Unreal. game. We should have known this game was going to be shocking in every way when they're scoring against the Bruins 23 seconds in, which is extremely fast, especially for this team. And then of all people, for it to be Josh Brown, this was his third goal of the season against his former, former team. team. You know, he's not the one we're, you know, penciling in as an anytime goal scorer night after night, but it, it, he got... He put them off on the right foot tonight. Yeah, and I, I just want to give a shout out on that first goal. That first goal doesn't go in if Nick Bugstead doesn't go in front of the goalie <laughs> and take away the goalie's eyes. Nice play by Nick Bugstead going to the net. I don't. Do you know where he's from? What I think, I think he's from Minnesota. By the way, and AJ, do you see what AJ? I was said? literally about to pull that up. Uh, Got to change the name to Lostin. AJ, where are you when we're trying the to Lost think of our thumbnails Bruins. for twenty yeah, minutes? The Lostin Bruins. Like, <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. Why didn't we, we? We sat here beating our heads against the more furniture recliners for about a half hour trying to come up with something clever. And I love it. He just well, <laughs> throws that out there. Still lots to get to. Craig is on his way. He's actually in an elevator. For real? Said. Yep, oh, can we not... do the keys before he gets here then? Let's do the keys. Because Craig won't want to be bored down with things Let's... that I have to, <laughs> oh, to talk about. Lacking. Go ahead. Welcome home. They have to win the first period in the mullet. Eh. I think that they the Boston su- Bruins survived dominated, it. survived it. Yeah. The Boston Bruins dominated the period, but they survive it. Stop the stretch play. I didn't see it. They tried it one time when they tried, uh, Taylor Hall tried to flip it over and the Coyotes broke it up. So I thought that one is, yeah, we'll take that one. The no penalties, pasta. Pasternak is elite on the power play. It <laughs> was the only do? one they missed. Yeah. So I'll give him two out of three That's on the keys good, to the because game. because we saw the and other two out of three they is good enough pass. to win. It really is. It so, really is. Better than 0 for 3. All you need to do is out. You know what? At the end of the night, yes, they were outshot the way they were, but they had one more goal. They really didn't do anything right. Like, look at the faceoffs. <laughs> they got dominated. Special teams, they got whooped. But the one thing they, they did right was win, and, and that's all that matters. And that's where analytics, let's see how the analytics break that one down. Just saying. Yeah. That's why analytics, what do they say? Stats are for losers? Just saying. I don't know. I don't know they what got they got to, to win the game. Um, all right. Well, we know that Sean live bet this game in the second yes, intermission. Won true. himself some money on the DraftKings Sportsbook app because that's just how easy it is. You can live bet because the lines are forever moving. And you got it at plus money, right, Sean? I did. Even though that's they were the, tied. That's the best part about it. Yeah, they were 2-2, obviously, that since the Bruins are quote-unquote, a better team. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's quote-unquote. I mean, <laughs> scoreboard, like Chris says in the comments, scoreboard. Anyways, um, yeah, no, obviously the, they're better, so they still got the Yota Plus odds. I just I just felt something inside. I felt it in me. And lo and behold, mere seconds later, Yota Seconds. Score. Seconds later. So if you did that too, and, and we also saw a couple in the Discord, somebody bet veggie over saves. That's another thing you can bet on that. Cash that easily. Tonight, tons of stuff you can bet on on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. I hope you did not bet on the Suns tonight. Oops, but we won't talk about that. Um, Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Sign up with the promo code PHNX. Place a $5 pregame Moneyline bet on any NBA team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code PHNX only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And Sean... To everybody's surprise, yeah. here's Sean's DraftKings pick of the week. Sean, what do you got? Um, so obviously, I'm picking the Detroit Lions minus two against the Minnesota Vikings. What? Psych! I lied. It's the Bills minus ten against. The <laughs> wow! <laughs> you're say you're going against my Vikings. Duh. Um, right. I do think the Lions are going to win that game though, because the Vikings are F R A U D S. They're fraud. Frauds. I've heard that from a lot of um, people. But the Bills are not, and they're going to beat the Jets by a lot. Um, and also to ask for Chris, Chris's question, I don't know what Skinner was thinking, but that's not where we're here. All right. That's so my Sean's DraftKings, DraftKings of the week pick wow. of the week. We appreciate that one. And uh, I think we're going to have some some post-show brews here, some Four yes. Peaks brews. 
I, I'm like so amped right now. I, I'm still stunned. And, and I think Post what it was, beers, that, that, it. that crow skull just elevated us out of the more furniture truly, recliners. Truly, truly. Um, and, and good thing for us here, we have a fridge full. Oh, of do you see Dustin? Beer. What Dustin said? Is Petey wearing special victory socks? He is. Oh, so I put on, they, you can't see it, but these are little houses. They're coming, <laughs> they're coming home. home. So they're I home. Said, oh, we're the home, home socks. Home sweet home. The homes. So I've got socks with homes on them. And of course, we go in the studio where you can't see my socks. Yeah. Well, I think there's a conspiracy <laughs> about me and the socks. The only time we sit out there and you don't put a graphic over me is when I'm not wearing socks. If I wear socks, we're in here or there's a graphic. Anywho, um, back to what I was saying. Ooh, Casey. Ouch. Be yeah, I'm going to, I'm done talking about the suns, AJ, I promise. Um, you can give the gift of beer this holiday season. We've been opening the Four Peaks Advent Calendar Box, which you can buy now for $55 at the 8th Street Pub in Tempe. It's full of specialty beers, tall boys, and more. What was the beer today? Did, did they open it on TPSP? Um, it was a double knot. Double hop okay, yeah. love it. We had a really interesting one yesterday. Yeah, it was a serious a black, age, serious yeah. black bourbon age. Really it was like cool. a mix between a cocktail and a beer. Really cool. So never, never a bad time to uh, enjoy a beer. Grab it from wherever you buy your beers. And as always, you must be twenty-one or older to enjoy and enjoy responsibly. All right. As we await Craig, wait. It's the building's got thirteen rows. What the hell is it? <laughs> Like for real, <laughs> victory, sucks, buddy. Hit the, the hit the Peloton. Just saying, <laughs> he's got to use a clothing rack right now. It's keeping his drawing oh on the Peloton. God. What happened to that? Craig was gonna get in shape. I thought that was happening. I thought that was a thing. And then it was the hip, and then it was something else. It's <laughs> thirteen fucking... flights of stairs. Taking an elevator, really? <laughs> Not even strays, direct shots, <laughs> buddy. To let's himself. go. <laughs> Dustin's had slowest elevator in hockey and as someone who has waited for the elevator at Mullet, I will say yeah. it does it takes a long time to True. come I will say oh my goodness um, any other like immediate takeaways thoughts from this game well, while we're waiting for it, it starts it begins and ends with Vimelka I, I know that but one of the other things that I think is really important to take note of in this game with Vimelka is giving him time off. And it's something they didn't do last year where we saw it. They played him five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That one time they played him almost 12 or 13 straight, and he began to struggle. So this time in Edmonton, on this road trip, you go, okay, we're gonna th we're gonna throw Ingram in. And Ingram, buddy, you're staying. I gave the, the the goal total tap going up, and they're not gonna pull him. You're gonna get the night off. So I think it's incredibly important. For Vamelka to keep up this kind of goaltending, he needs to get those kind of breaks. And he got the day off yesterday without practice, and he had the game off against the Edmonton Oilers. And I think that's going to be the key in keeping him at this level of performance. I really think it's important. And I think don't underestimate how important that rest is for a player like Vamelka, especially with a game like this. So now does he take tomorrow off and try to go again on Sunday? That game's at 5 o'clock. It's going to be something to keep your eye on. Yep. And without further ado, here he is. He made it. It's Craig guys, with all sorts of light beams. Wow. I feel like I feel like John Travolta right now. You seeing all this disco stuff? It's like disco night here. It's yeah. crazy. It's a party. I've Craig. tried like That's five why. different locations. I can't I can't get rid of these light beams. I might have to do it from the dungeon next time. <laughs> It's okay. It, it's a good vibe. Craig, I mean, we've we've pretty much talked about all the major things, but we'll we'll get your immediate reactions, immediate takeaways. Oh my god, they just beat the Boston Bruins. That's my reaction. Yeah. And obviously it was it was a huge chunk of it was Karel Vimelka. He was just ridiculous tonight. But again, they took advantage of their opportunities. They did not have a lot of looks in this game, and yet they bury four goals. You got to hand it to him. I mean, it's this is not this is not a formula you can follow. Too many victories, but they just beat the best team in the NHL after a 14 game road trip when they got home at 3:30 in the morning on Thursday. Give it up for the Coyotes tonight, regardless of how it looked. They got it done tonight. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that you were going to talk to a few different guys after the game tonight. So who did you talk to, and and what did they all have to say? We got Karel Vimelka, first of all, who said he likes facing a lot of shots because it keeps him in the game. So I, I followed up, of course, with just to be clear, you want to face between 45 and 50 shots a game. And 
that's when he realized, yeah, that's probably not what I want to face <laughs> in the game. But, <laughs> but he felt dialed in. He felt really good tonight, and I think it showed tonight he was – uh, I, I can't count the number of spectacular saves. He made a couple saves with his waffle tonight, PD, that, I mean, you, you don't think of waffle saves as great saves, but they were great saves in this game. And Andre talked about, you know, taking away Boston's grade to strength, and then they just left the rest up to Karel Vimelka, and he just did the job tonight. He's been so good this season, and he just got a win again against the best team in the league. Uh, the other uh, player we talked to was Lawson Krause, who still is casually on – that 40 goal pace, he said at the start of the season, maybe I can get to 30. And I said, well, maybe you can get to 40 now. He said he's thinking, thinking about shaving off the beard. No, guys. he can't. That's what I, we talked about it. We talked about, is is that a dangerous thing? Are you, you risking angering the hockey gods or messing up your karma? You probably can't right now. He's got 12 goals, guys. He's leading the team. Again, he's on pace for 40 goals. I don't think Lawson Kraus should change anything up right now. Yeah, yeah no. agreed. I don't know. He's getting a little pressure I mean, from Butterpig. I mean, the, the, the beard is looking long, Lawson, but just, ro- just roll with you it. You got to roll with if it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Amen. And but you talked about Veggie and Veggie's ability to play in these games like this. Look at his first shutout against Winnipeg was 45 saves. These, he, it's his ninth game, we It said? is true that when he Over faces 40? crazy shots, he He was dialed really in. Well. He was dialed in from the very first minute of this game. And they were, uh, had a one-goal lead after the first minute. But he was dialed in from the beginning. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. This, I'll put this as some of the best he's ever played. Because I thought he was he was more in control. I didn't think that... I, I felt like he wasn't sliding around as much. I thought the puck came to him a little bit more than what we've seen from Carell in, in the past. Craig, the... the, the he won the game. Like, he won yeah, the game. No question. No question. The second best player, and by the way, the, I kind of like this filter on me, actually. It's like a, sorry to say it. It's, it's like a Carrie Lake filter I've got going on <laughs> here right now. I look pretty good. I look pretty good on screen. Um, the second best player in this game for the Coyotes tonight, Matias Michelli. Yeah. He was ridiculous tonight. So, again, so good with the puck on his stick. So responsible in a lot of areas. You know, I asked Andre after the game again if they could ever convince him to shoot the puck and maybe round out his game. Because if this guy had a couple more goals, he's jumping up into that Calder conversation. He was phenomenal tonight. He was, like I said, other than Karel Melka, I thought he was the second best Coyote on the ice tonight. And the other thing he's doing too is he's winning those 50-50 battles along the wall, and he's protecting the puck extremely well for a guy that hasn't been in the league for very long. And he's not a real big guy either, but he's been able to protect the puck and be able to hold on and make those plays that he's making. I still, I'm going to say it every show, because I know he's listening on the drive home from the mullet tonight, is he's got to... Start shooting. His passing is elite. We've seen it. The pass he makes to Kraus on the game winner is fantastic between someone's legs. He's going to have to start shooting the puck. You can see it in his head. He's looking and looking. Who am I going to pass to? He's going to start getting that confidence. He's going to start putting pucks on that. I know it's it's in him. He's got it. And I know his, his passing is elite, but he needs to ask the, add that shooting and goal scoring to his bag of tricks as well. He's averaging less than one shot on goal per game. Yeah, he's got to up that number a little bit. He's, yeah. he's he's playing with that. I mean, that I, I really like that line with your guy Scott Bugstad and Lawson Scott? Krause. Scott, they're really good. <laughs> Uncle Scott. Oh, I said Scott. It's big. Yeah, Uncle fine Scott. jar. Yeah. See, there you can't is. do that in Minnesota, kids. Yeah. Fine jar. Yeah, seriously, yeah. It's like like saying Phoenix Coyotes, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, I like the chemistry of that line a lot. I think yeah. they're playing really well together. They complement each other really well. Yeah, they, they, they were unreal tonight. Um, Craig, another point of this game, and it could have been a turning point in the wrong direction. Luckily, the Coyotes did not let it get to them. Jacob Chikrin scored. The goal was unfortunately overturned, but he still had a pretty good night tonight. He had an assist. He was plus two. Um, and we kind of did some math before and during the game of Chikrin at this point of the season um, through nine games this year versus last year. So here it is. 2021-22, last season through nine games, Jacob Chikrin had zero goals, zero assists, 23 shots on goals, and was minus 15. And this year through nine games, Jacob Chikrin has three goals, five assists, 34 shots on goal, and is plus six. Huh. So, huh. Yeah. looking a little bit better. Does someone want to get out of the valley? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said. I, uh, I, I- I'm going to have something on him. I've, I've got a neutral zone coming tomorrow. I've got something on him. And I talked to Bill Armstrong, and he was pretty honest about it. He's, you got to give it to him. you got to give him credit. He's probably been their best player over the last several games. Jacob yeah. Chikrin's been terrific. And that's 
that's what he's got to do, right? We, we said this all along that he was probably going to have to play his way out of town after being off for so long, after having the injuries, after having a subpar season last year. But give credit to Jacob Chikrin. He has been terrific since he came back, and that is going to help his trade value. One of the things, one of the questions that just came up in the chat, Craig, was from Salamander. I always said man thing, Salamander man thing. Should Veggie get traded? So many teams need goaltending and Coyotes need Bedard. Thoughts on a Veggie trade? I I don't see that happening this soon. Down the road, if he keeps doing what he's doing, you know, maybe next season. I, PD, you know how what sort of impact that can have on a team. You, Yeah, you want to lose. I get that. You want Connor Bedard. I get all that. But when you have a goaltender, goaltending situation that is unstable, it can really adversely affect a team. And I think we saw that with Carter Hutton when he really struggled early last season. I don't get the sense that they're looking to move him. But you never say never, right? If somebody makes an unbelievable offer for Karel Vanelka on, again, another reasonable contract, a guy who's among the league leaders in in what I consider the most important stats, you got to at least listen, right? But I, I, I don't get the sense that they're shopping him, but if somebody knocks their socks off with a move, uh, uh, with, with an offer, I think they'd have to listen. Um, 4.99 super chat from Drew. Did you all see Craig's red robe treatment? I we know. did. Drew sent a picture in the Discord of the red robes um, sectioning you, you, the media, off from... Uh, the crowd and so so craig that craig fight demanded in the stands, that by the way craig that, demanded that, that fight in the role. stands wasn't you someone jumping the ropes and uh trying to offer you perrier instead of pellegrino that wasn't you you know i, I don't know leah because i don't really pay attention to the commoners um <laughs> i was uh wow. I, I want that you is to know so that, bougie. You know, when they when they designed the ropes i asked for crushed red velvet so they delivered with that and what <laughs> what fans don't know and they may find out if they dare to touch those ropes is they're also electrified, so I might get a little bit of a shock if they try to approach me. So, you know, approach oh with caution. Oh, my God. I, I, honestly, it, it, he literally, the first time he sat in mullet, he said, we need either security or some way to separate me from the that, that is How bougie false. is. But I'll, I'll get back to Veggie. Get back to Veggie on that. I, and, Craig, I'm going to agree with you right now. I don't think he's on the yeah. trade block. I don't think they're shopping him. I don't think they're looking. But... What Bill Armstrong has shown and proven in the past is you never say never to anything. And as this thing gets closer to the trade deadline and there is a team that's trying to make a run at this thing and somebody gets hurt and they need a goalie that they can still fit under their cap, never say never. And and what would a team that thinks this is their last chance or their window is open right now, what would that team be willing to sell for their future? Just... Uh, never say never. I, I don't think it's it's on the list of, you know, it's 11th on the 10 list of to-dos for Bill Armstrong right now. And maybe next season when his, his contract is expired, it's going to be more likely. I don't think he's shopping him, but never say never. Yeah. Um, I might ask about it down the road, but, uh, you know, like, I, don't, I don't think he's focused on that. And to your point, Craig, it, can you imagine what yeah. that would do to the heart of this team right now? If oh, you take him yeah. away, guys would get, there would be a mutiny in that room. Guys would go yeah. out of their yeah. mind. So yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't think you can do that just for that. And you're talking about development and, and trying to give guys something to hang on to and yeah. give them some hope. And, and when you saw Lawson Krause in the intermission, you like the first thing he yes. said was, oh, my God, Corolla Monk has been amazing tonight. So you you, you can't. It, I know they're trying to lose, but I think AJ had said earlier that it's the perfect recipe because he's playing well and they're still losing games. So yeah. that's great, too. And, and one more thing from from AJ before we move off the goalie conversation, because I, um, I saw him ask it earlier. Uh, maybe PD can speak to this a little more. What is the key to Arizona's goalie development? What are they doing differently to consistently turn out quality net miners? It's something we've kind of touched on before, but you know, that takes a answer? deep dive because the funny thing is it's happened under multiple goalie coaches, multiple head coaches. Is yeah. it the lack of pressure in this market? I think that helps. I do think that helps. And you can look at different people teach different styles. Sean Burke was one of the ones who revitalized his career first under Benoit Lair. Yep. And he had him standing deeper. And then it changed the way he played. He allowed Sean Burke to stay in this league, became an all-star again because if he changed his game. But the list is long. And we talked about goalie coaches changing. It's yeah. something in the water or lack of water. I, I don't know what it is. But, but I think it's a deep dive. Beauty. You could even say that, you know, from Benoit Lair to Sean Burke, it was it was a constant because 
Benoit Allaire taught Sean Burke how right. to play and really how to coach, and Burke carried those things. But when Corey Schwab comes in, no, it's not it's not the same ideology at all. So no. it's it's yeah, there's 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 something weird there. But and it's not once or twice, hard. Craig. It's five yeah. or six times. Yeah, yeah. That this franchise has revitalized a goalie's career from Devin Dubnik to Briz Golov to Sean Burke. I mean, that's a long list. So Mike Smith, Kemper, and yep. now Karel Vomelka. Yep. Now yep. we could just figure out the other 18 guys on the ice. We'd be all right. <laughs> hey. no, soon, I, soon. Sorry. Um, okay, a couple more things for Craig. Um, there were a lot of Boston Bruins fans in the crowd tonight. Uh, there was a lot of yellow. So we wanted to ask the chat here tonight, if you're a season ticket holder and and you can just, you don't have to answer directly. You can just say something else and we'll, we'll nod. But like um, season ticket holders must have sold their tickets to Boston Bruins fans tonight. Like overwhelmingly, there were a ton of Boston fans. Yeah, that's my sense. I, I have to believe some people cashed in tonight. So you know, pretty smart. I mean, they probably made some money tonight because this place was Boston heavy tonight. And as somebody mentioned, one of you guys mentioned a fight broke out, of course, in the stands at some point. So yeah, it felt like we were at the garden. Yes. Yep. It, there was a lot of um, black and yellow, but tonight this was, this was a momentous night because we saw four home games at mullet earlier this season, but this was the first time with the annex open. So we finally got to kind of see a little peek behind the curtain um, of what, the inside of the annex looked like um, none of us have have been in it yet, but we saw some pictures on the Boston Bruins social media, on the Coyotes social media. So we did get to see the Coyotes locker room. Finally, um, this was on the Arizona Coyotes Twitter. So a much bigger, you know, more official space. There's windows in their locker room too, which is really cool to see. Um, so that, that was exciting. And then another part um, that is new is the walkway from the visitor room to wow. the ice. And this is something we talked about um, when we toured the arena, that this would be a thing. We didn't know how they were going to address this. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, Craig took this photo. Um, this is the walkway that the visiting team walks on the way from the annex to the ice, Craig. What was that like seeing oh, that? And is. here is a video, a video of, it. of the team yeah. Walk. I well, mean, you could really just and we had be to turn right the there. audio down on that because it yeah. was not. There's a lot of heckling. You can see yeah. the crowd right <laughs> here. Crowded, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. But Craig, what was that like? It's just it was just weird. I've never seen anything like it before. But but they have completely partitioned them off, and there are security guards stationed all along the glass. So there's no way any fan is going to get to the players. They can't get to them anyway physically, but. Their, their security guards making sure everything is calm there as well. We did get to go inside the Coyotes locker room tonight. They they held the uh, post game interviews for the players there, so we so, got to see that. Hopefully, we'll get to see a little more of the annex. the uh, The walkways outside, you guys know that it, it's not physically connected to the arena, but it's, it's a short space, as you guys know, between the annex and and the building. What they've done is they've covered it with like, you know, what it felt like to me. I've covered Super Bowls before. It felt like you were walking through these tents, you know, like they do for the Super Bowl, these walkways that are covered with tents. That's what's outside the annex, basically connecting it to the building. So they're never exposed to any kind of weather or anything in there or even you know, nobody can even see them in that area. That's what's right outside of the annex. Then you go into the various locker rooms. We actually were directed accidentally into the Bruins locker room initially and then uh, – <laughs> Security figured out. Oh, you you want the Coyotes, not the Bruins? I'm like, I'll I'll check it out if you let me in. But we so ended how, up going to the Coyotes locker room. So how was the Coyotes locker room? It's big. It's big. It's sizable. So it's it, it it's fine. To be honest, it's fine. And and we've mentioned this before. When this arena was originally planned by ASU, they only had two major locker rooms. I mean, the community rank obviously has some smaller ones. But in order to host regional sites for 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 the NCAA tournament. You need four locker rooms that are up to a certain standard. Well, the Coyotes have just given it to ASU now, so they've got four really high-quality locker rooms. They can host NCAA regionals here now. Wow. Wow. That's exciting. awesome. That's exciting. Um, and well, playoffs? playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> we're not talking playoffs tonight, Craig. I know it's one oh, win. Buddy. I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah, let's not, let's not go there. Um, well, Craig, any final thoughts from you on this game, the Annex? Any, anything. There was a lot, but I'll give yeah, you the, just, the final word here. Just a couple other things to look for in my neutral zone tomorrow. I got a chance to talk to Andre Turigny about Nick Ritchie's absence from the lineup for the past three games and what he saw from him tonight. 
So I'll address that in the story. And then I talked to him about going with, which, which they ended up doing again tonight to everyone's surprise, 11 forwards and seven defensemen. Andre really likes that alignment. In fact, he likes just about everything about it. So I chatted with him about that as well. All that will be in the neutral zone as well as a, a look at Chikrin's trade value, um, the annex, of course, you know, and of course the ending of this 19-game winning streak that the Bruins had over the Coyotes. It's over now. Over. Over. <laughs> over. <laughs> it's over. Well, Craig, uh, we'll let you go. Drive safely, and uh, we'll everyone will see you on. Yeah, and I'll Sunday. tune into that neutral zone because I want to know yeah. about all that shit. I, by I'm tomorrow. very, very intrigued. Yeah, me all too. Right. All right, guys, we'll see you later. All see right, later. bye, Craig. Drive safe. Fly home safely, soon. <laughs> well, definitely check out Craig's stories. It'll be up on gophnx.com, and most of the stories on gophnx.com are unlocked. So unless there's a diehard only label on the story, you can read it. So. I don't. We didn't ask him if it was for diehards or not, but you don't have to worry if you're a diehard. You can read it all. Um, so become a diehard today. Tons of perks because not only do you get access to those, but you also get 20% off on merchandise. Hoodies are now in the PHNX locker. Phoenix gear in the PHNX locker and diehard only merch. And you also get 20% off on events, which good news for you. We have an event, an event. coming up. And if you're a diehard, it is less than if you are not a diehard and it is the inaugural phnx tea party that's t-e-e party at dobson ranch golf course we are renting out the entire driving range come hang out with big drive energy which is um, the golf podcast at dmvr the phnx crew and fellow diehards for a night of golf food drinks contest prizes and more the phnx suns crew will be hosting a watch party for suns versus timberwolves check the link in our description to reserve your spot right now and for the diehards check the link in the discord for your or check the discord for your special link where you'll save 20 percent on the special event we're talking unlimited range balls, rental clubs, a jumbo screen showing the Suns game, a free hour of range times, mini games, contests, heaters, hot chocolate, food and drink. It's going to be a blast. So you're going to want to come out to that. And that is uh, January 13th. So RSVP now. Links in the description. And Craig, hard at work in the mullet taking the endless elevator somehow that there's literally three levels it can possibly stop on um and he was in there forever pd and i and sean were in our more furniture recliners i unfortunately spilled my wow. entire bottle of water on, water on myself <laughs> um but wiped right off the wiped chair off. i will yeah. say the more furniture cleaned right up i also got some more more new furniture yesterday because my family was sending me christmas presents and i needed stuff from more stuff from my apartment just send them the more furniture link love it furniture. love it and pd's shopping for a new couch so yeah. he's gonna be checking that's my weekend you know, plans. And, and it's perfect timing because they have a holiday clearance event happening now at more furniture and you can save up to uh 50 off so great deal for sure all right a couple other little notes to get to before we wrap up just looking around the league and around hockey um asu Big win tonight, 4-1. They needed on the road to win tonight. tonight on the road. So great news for ASU. We'll follow along with them as they go forward. Uh, Logan Cooley <laughs> had two goals and an assist tonight in Minnesota's 7-1 win. So we always love seeing the top Coyotes prospects lighting it up, and he did so. We quote tweeted one of the highlights on PHNX Coyotes on Twitter. Check that out. He went one-on-one -on -one with a goalie, and it was unbelievable um so that was amazing to see and then looking around just the nhl and you know we're, we're celebrating a win tonight because it's they're kind of few and far between love when they beat a team like boston literally at the top of the league but looking down at the bottom of the standings anaheim at the bottom did they officially lose yeah to san jose I don't tonight no if it's over but it's close um so that game yep they lost 6-1 to san jose so Sucks that they lost. Would have been great for that to go to overtime for yeah, there to be point. three points because San Jose, we also needed them to win, but we needed Anaheim to win more. Um, this is for the, the bottom of the standings tankathon, yeah. if you will. Columbus, though. Columbus pulls out a big win. They tonight. they won tonight, and that was huge. So, you know. So they're Columbus sitting. Columbus won? Yep, Columbus won. Yep. Oh, that's nice. We didn't do that the other night against the Buffalo Sabres when they scored nine goals, five of which came from Tage Thompson. We're never going to Arizona is sitting in 29th. Fourth, fourth to Connor Bedard standings. Arizona, Columbus are tied with 20 points. Chicago 
with 18. And Anaheim in the basement with 17. Three points behind the but Arizona Coyotes. That's just for now. A lot of hockey left. There's a lot of There's hockey left. There's a lot of hockey left. Um, and the Coyotes, it, 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 we literally looked at this game, and I don't think a single one of us no. here, except for Sean in the second intermission, believed that the Coyotes were going to win this game at all. But let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Coyotes because it doesn't really get any easier from here with opponents or – with travel, the Flyers are coming in to town this Sunday for a 5 o'clock game. Philadelphia hasn't been great either, but any John Tortorella team is going to be They're going to compete. Um, San Jose, again, they're toward the bottom, but we saw them, you know, be a, beat Anaheim 6-1 tonight. And then a back-to-back Friday, Saturday, this coming week or next weekend, a week from today, the Islanders and Sean's Buffalo Sabres back-to-back. So it's going to be tough. Gonna be tough. Yes, gonna, you can see the wheels just spin. And also, like, AJ is I know, roasting Sean. Like, Weird and flex that's what about he's the I'm just, I'm just. You're trying to think of a good comeback. I'm just bringing it all in. But also, I know, I know that the Sabers are not good and that they're gonna lose 25 straight games. I know that better than anybody. But I'm still gonna talk my shit when I get the chance. Yeah, and they got <laughs> the best player in the league right now. Tage I'm, for the record, the I'm rooting for the, I'm rooting for the Coyote. Well, no, I'm rooting for the Sabers when they play before the tank. Because it doesn't help them. Fair but enough. In I can... general, I'm rooting for the success of the Coyotes over the success of the Buffalo Sabres. Okay. I can respect it. Um, Kenny said, did I miss King of the Game? Kenny, we'll give you one guess yeah. who the King of the Game who the was. Of, who who um, stole that game? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Curl Vezmelka. Vezmelka. <laughs> do, do you think he starts getting some love around the league? I, I think I would bet well, half of the announcers in the league couldn't pronounce his name. I bet you they don't even know who he is. I mean, I'm glad that this was a performance against... A team like Boston, not like an East Coast yeah. team, a, yep. a, an original six team, a big market on the East Coast. I don't know. I mean, Veggie deserves. I mean, his numbers are there. His the numbers respect. are in the top of the league right now. I mean, they're they're right with the, some of the league leaders, and they're better than Shesterkins. Somebody said. Um, so I, I, I mean, clearly we know that's the difference. Can he keep that up for the entire season? Geez, we'll see. I mean, the games coming up here are going to be tough. Um, that Philly team, you know, they're going to play hard. And here's the other thing to worry about. So we know they're tired. They're tired after tonight. So do you give them a day off tomorrow? You can't because the game on Sunday is a five o'clock game and they won't be able to skate on Sunday morning. So you have to skate tomorrow and then they fly on Monday. I mean, this team gets absolutely no breaks. They have to be exhausted. I don't know how they're able to get out there and keep doing what they do and playing as hard as they did tonight. But yeah. wow. Honestly, kudos, kudos to the whole group. Um, somebody a few seconds ago said, let's see the punch card. So let's see the punch see card. It. And we finally... Had a we finally got the first win on this line. On the third row. Way Yay! To go, Yotes. After losing six straight before, they finally pulled off a win wow. for this line end, and uh, we're chipping away slowly at this season. Um, we're almost through three rows. Almost through three rows. San Jose on Tuesday will be three rows. Love it. Wow. Love it. And we'll it. be at the draft before you know it. We will. We will. HK till draft day. HK till draft day. Well, for this Coyotes group who's been working hard and they have this big win tonight, they should go, and especially because they're at the mullet. It's so close to Mill Ave. Yep, it's and true. And on Mill Ave is this place oh. called Illegal Pete's, which is one of my favorite places ever because their food is amazing. And the Arizona Coyotes players and staff, by the way, shout out to the Coyotes equipment staff. For like Craig said, this team landed at 3:30 yeah. a.m. on Thursday, and the equipment staff, everybody else went home, went to bed. The equipment staff went to, work. to the arena to at work. 3:30 in the morning. This is they stepped the annex. It's brand new. It's a brand new place. They had to bring everything in, get it set up, and I bet you every single Coyotes player walked in that locker room today, and not a thing was out of place because this yep. equipment staff goes above and beyond, and then they it's deserve true. all the praise. So I hope. Everybody goes out and treats themselves and get, grab some illegal pizza illegal no, because not only do they have phenomenal food, they also have phenomenal drinks as well, PD. And I love illegal pizza. I ate it all the time Tucson. in college. Yep, there's one in Tucson. Tucson. I know my but kid. There's one on Mill Avenue, and we are so excited to welcome illegal pizza to the PH Next family. You can check out their location off of Mill in Tempe. And right now, when you purchase $100 in gift cards, they'll throw you a $25 one what? on the house. And be on the lookout for a few informal happy hours with our Peach and X Sendables crew, which includes Sean. We sampled the queso the other day, and like 
Oh, the queso elite. elite. Yeah. The margaritas elite. Get the prickly pear margarita okay. when you go. My son was a big talk street taco guy there. Elite. Yep. And they have um you can get like breakfast tacos there yep. too. And they're just so good. And it's right there on Mill. So great thing to grab um, before or after a coyotes game. And for the players and staff, treat yourself. I like it. Go get some illegal pizza. You can eat it there. You can take it to go. It's really good. Definitely check that out. And we saw a couple home games there on the upcoming schedule, which is great to see. We don't want it like how it was tonight with all the Boston Bruins fans right. filling up the arena. So get on game time to buy your tickets. Next time you go to a Coyotes game, you can save up to 60% on tickets when you buy them last minute. So the day of the next Coyotes game on Sunday, pull up the game time app. You can buy them there. You can buy your parking pass on there. It's super easy to use. Like I said, save up to 60% when you buy last minute. And when you do it, the best way to support us is by buying with the link below in our description. Any other... Uh, Winning streak starts with one. Any other thoughts? So let's go. Winning streak and... Flyers. The, the we just have to reemphasize that the freaking curse is over. The curse is over and there's something special about the mullet. And what I'll tell you this, this is where you start to believe because we said, oh, some teams have a hard time in this building. Some teams have a hard against time against this team. Wait till teams start going, gosh, we just can't win in the mullet. And by the way, Craig published a story today on why the ice is so good on gophnx.com. That one's free and unlocked. Check it out. Really, really, really interesting. There were some things in there. I was like, I didn't even think about that. Very informative. Um, and, and as always. No, seriously. He does he does a lot of great work. But yeah, what what a game. What a what a win. This is one that this is the one that get gets us through these eighty two yep. games where their goal is to finish last. So it was a fun night for us, fun night. For everybody in the chat, again, we appreciate everyone being here with us. It's after 11 p.m., so for those watching live, for those tuning in later or listening on audio later, we appreciate you immensely. Please like this video, and if you're listening on audio, please subscribe, leave us a review while you're there as well, and then while you're at it, follow PHNX Sports across all socials and uh, subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. We spoke to Tempe Mayor Corey Woods yesterday, who gave extremely detailed and thorough responses to some very difficult questions. Yep. Um, we asked him about the airport. We asked him about case. We asked him about financial protections for the city. We asked him what happens if things fall through. Like we asked him everything you possibly need to know about the Arizona Coyotes proposed arena and entertainment district. And he answered it all. Yep. So um, t check that out. It's up on YouTube. It's on audio. Our interview with Tempe Mayor Corey Woods was phenomenal. And it, it, if you live in Tempe or if you're an Arizona Coyotes fan or if you're a hockey fan and just want to know more, definitely I implore you to check that out. PD, I know you have... Yeah, one just one last thing on the game. We had three stars. We had Vimelka. We had Kraus as the second star with two goals and assists. Michelli is the third star with his two assists. But something we haven't mentioned in the entire show that I want to make sure we recognize and give a little bit of the flowers to is Schmaltz's goal assisted by Keller unbelievably elite pass by Clayton Keller and the the finish by Schmaltz. He hasn't scored in you know points in five now. So it was big for those two guys to get back on the board because they were really hot and they went through a little bit of a dry spell. So maybe now this can start another streak for those two talented yeah. players. Yeah, absolutely. And we didn't even talk about Richie getting back in the lineup tonight, but like Craig said, he'll have a story up on that. So you can check that out in his neutral zone. But Nick Richie did make his return tonight as well. Um, so just just a, a lot to take away from tonight's game, and, and we'll talk more on Sunday when we're here for the post game show after the Philadelphia Flyers game. Um, but until then, you can follow each of us on Twitter. I'm at Leah Merrill at S Peters Hockey at Sean underscore Depaz, and of course at Craig S Morgan. But of all roads, as they say on the D back show, but all roads lead to at PHNX underscore Coyote. So be sure to follow us there on Twitter. <laughs> I'm not even reading that comment, AJ. Um, again, we appreciate everybody for being here with us. We'll talk to you on Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. Oh.